Good morning, Simon Winter is my name. I'm the principal of Rain and Horn Business Sales. Today I want to talk to you about the special conditions that you may want to include in a business sale agreement if you are about to buy a business. There are five primary conditions uh, that should be in most contracts but not necessarily all. The first is a finance condition if you need to borrow money and it will identify how much you need to borrow, who are you going to borrow it from, the date of an application and a date for an approval. The second is the tenure of the property, so a lease document. If you're going to get a new lease or an assignment of the existing lease. The difference between the two is an assignment of a lease really involves picking up the existing lease and just transferring it as it is. A new lease opens up the prospect of changing the terms and conditions. The third condition that you may want to think about is a deed of restraint um, to prevent the existing uh, operator from going back into that trade and that will cover two points. It'll be time and distance. The time will normally be two or three years. The distance will be the range that the business operates. Now for a cafe in the city that would mean as little as two or three hundred metres but for a business that operates all over Australia, for example, it, it would be the entire country. The fourth special condition is employee entitlements. Now this enables the purchaser to enter into the contract whether they want some, all or none of the employees. Um, the current employer will be required to pay out all of the entitlements unless there's an assignment of those at the point of settlement, in which case it's done on a tax effective basis. The other interesting thing is there is a clause within the Fair Trade Act that enables a purchaser to deny any obligations to casual employees and that's becoming involved more and more. The fifth special condition is a due diligence clause which, in, which provides the purchaser with time to validate the information they have been provided. It can be done by a purchaser or by a purchaser's accountant. The secondary group of special conditions that applies and will have the same impact and the same strength as the primary group, but they won't be in as many contracts. First of all, there's a deed of guarantee and indemnity. This, this obligates the directors of a company to the contract in the same way that they would be if they signed that contract in their own name. The next one is if there's a franchise or licence agreement in place, the purchase of the business will need to be approved and so the contract will be subject to that approval. Next is a liquor licence. If there is a liquor licence in place, finance must be approved before there can be an application made for that licence. The next is uh, a contemporaneous settlement with the land contract. This applies where there is a sale of, a, of land at the same time as the business and is in effect uh, collateral to that business transaction and what, would, uh, what happens is if one contract can't stand up, the other one will fall over as well. The next is, is subject to the sale of the purchaser's property. Uh, this will identify the amount that the purchaser wants to sell the property for and also the address of that property and puts a time frame on the sale. Finally, there's a range of specific conditions that may be in some contracts but not in the majority. Uh, again, they carry the same weight as any other special condition if they're in there. First of all, where there's a transfer of deposits held, for example with motels, caravan parks, where, where people pay deposits in advance, they need to be accounted for. In the same way, uh, dealing with laybys needs to be accounted for. If a purchaser requires additional training from a vendor or continuing employment from the vendor after the sale of the business, that needs to be specifically included in the contract. Also warranty claims uh, where you're dealing with a manufacturing business, how they are dealt with after the sale will also need to be included in the contract. Uh, and finally, if there is a transfer of any exist existing rental arrangements or marketing contracts, they need to be set out in the contract as well. The, the purpose of getting this information in the contract is basically to minimise any problems afterwards. These contracts, by and large, are written to the benefit of the purchaser, not the vendor, because the vendor, after settlement, has got the money and the purchaser has got the business and has got all the problems. If you have any questions about any of those special conditions or, you, or any other special conditions that you may think of, 
please give me a call or send me an email. My details will be at the end of this video. Thank you for your time and I hope that is of assistance.